uh, one of the lasers uh, wasn't working well, so uh, we had to uh, recalibrate that, uh, the laser and tighten the beam. Elon Musk and the U.S. Navy have become major forces in shaping the future of technology and defense. New video from the Navy shows what may be the future of modern close-in warfare. But now, they've reportedly joined forces on a top-secret project that could change everything we know about military power and technological innovation. The latest investment is a military laser called the Dragonfly Weapon, which will be used to shoot down Russian drones in Ukraine. In this video, we're diving deep into shocking reports and credible leaks about a mysterious new technology that's so advanced, it's said to be unstoppable. If you're looking at a, a, a boat coming in over the water, you can target exactly the engine and take out exactly the engine and not necessarily damage anything else. So, and that type of precision weapon work is, is something that you don't really get with conventional weapons because there's, there tends to be more collateral damage. Elon Musk has never shied away from ambitious and world-altering projects. From revolutionizing the electric vehicle industry with Tesla to venturing into space with SpaceX, Musk is a visionary with his eyes set firmly on the future of technology, energy, and even human survival. But today, Musk has reportedly taken things to a whole new level, announcing the release of SpaceX's new warship, a technologically advanced weapon of unprecedented power that, according to sources, could hypothetically wipe out Russia in seconds. This groundbreaking announcement has sent shockwaves across the world, not only because of the unimaginable power this warship supposedly possesses, but because it raises a multitude of questions. What kind of warship could SpaceX, a company known for space exploration, create? How would it work? And perhaps most importantly, why has Musk chosen to pursue the development of a warship that could potentially disrupt global military balances and geopolitical landscapes? Today, we'll dive deep into these questions, examining the implications, technology, and potential scenarios that could unfold as a result of this new development. We'll explore what we know about SpaceX's technological capabilities and the military applications that may have come from years of advanced rocket science and space research. The Convergence of Space and Warfare – A Historical Context To understand the implications of Musk's announcement, we must first look at the convergence of space exploration and military technology throughout history. The militarization of space has long been a point of concern for many, with nations like the United States, Russia, and China increasingly investing in space-based military assets such as satellites and missile defense systems. During the Cold War, space was a new frontier for military superiority, with both the U.S. and the Soviet Union racing to develop satellites, reconnaissance technology, and even the possibility of space-based weapons. The 1980s brought about the Strategic Defense Initiative, also known as Star Wars, under President Ronald Reagan, which aimed to deploy weapons in space capable of intercepting nuclear missiles before they reached the U.S. But despite decades of research and development, no nation has yet fully realized the potential of a true space-based military platform. That is, until now. With Elon Musk's SpaceX, leading the charge in reusable rocket technology, interplanetary travel, and autonomous spacecraft. The lines between civilian space exploration and military applications have blurred more than ever before. SpaceX has already partnered with the U.S. government on numerous defense contracts, including launching military satellites and developing technologies for the Pentagon. Given this history, it is perhaps not so surprising that SpaceX is now making headlines with the creation of a warship. But what is truly shocking is the scale and power Musk claims this warship possesses. Is this just a strategic announcement meant to deter adversaries? Or is this the beginning of a new era of military technology? The technology behind the SpaceX warship. Let's start with what we know about the technological foundation that makes such a warship possible. SpaceX has spent years developing reusable rockets, like the Falcon 9 and Starship, which are capable of reaching low Earth orbit and even deep space missions. But how do these rockets relate to military applications? 
To answer that, we need to examine the underlying technology and the ways in which SpaceX's innovations could be adapted for military purposes. First, propulsion systems. The Falcon and Starship rockets use advanced Merlin and Raptor engines, respectively, which are some of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. Their ability to deliver heavy payloads into space at a fraction of the cost of traditional rockets has revolutionized the industry. It's possible that these propulsion systems could be adapted for a warship capable of rapid movement across not only Earth's atmosphere but beyond, offering unprecedented strategic mobility for military operations. Second, SpaceX has achieved breakthroughs in autonomous navigation and artificial intelligence for its rockets and spacecraft. This technology is crucial for a warship as it would allow for autonomous operations, eliminating the need for human pilots in dangerous combat zones and reducing the risk to human life. The potential for an unmanned, AI-controlled warship capable of making split-second decisions in combat situations could redefine the future of warfare. Third, SpaceX has demonstrated mastery in rapid launch technology. One of SpaceX's most impressive feats is the speed at which they can launch and land rockets. This could have significant military applications, allowing the warship to deploy from Earth or even from space in a matter of minutes. This kind of quick response capability would be crucial in modern warfare, where seconds can make the difference between success and failure in a mission. Finally, let's talk about the concept of energy weapons. There have been rumors and speculative reports that SpaceX is developing directed energy weapons, which use concentrated beams of energy, such as lasers, to disable or destroy targets. If this technology has been integrated into SpaceX's new warship, it would give it the ability to strike targets with pinpoint accuracy and at the speed of light, neutralizing threats before they have a chance to retaliate. The Weaponry – Advanced Systems for Total Destruction While SpaceX has primarily been known for its civilian and exploration goals, the development of a warship would mean an evolution in their weaponry. From what we can gather, this warship is designed to utilize both traditional and futuristic weapon systems. These include missile payloads, energy-based weapons, and potentially even more exotic forms of combat technology, which SpaceX has had years to perfect while working on spaceflight and satellite-based defense systems. One of the primary capabilities of the warship appears to be its ability to deploy hypersonic missiles. Hypersonic missiles travel at speeds greater than Mach 5, making them nearly impossible to intercept with current missile defense systems. With SpaceX's advanced propulsion technology, it's conceivable that these hypersonic missiles could be launched from space and hit targets on Earth within minutes. Moreover, it's likely that the warship will be equipped with directed energy weapons potentially including high-powered lasers or particle beams. These types of weapons offer a huge advantage over traditional missiles and bombs, as they can strike targets at the speed of light and cause devastating damage without the need for physical projectiles. Such technology would allow Musk's warship to take out enemy satellites, missiles, or even ground-based targets with precision and without the risk of being intercepted. One other potential weapon system that has been speculated is the use of kinetic bombardment technology, sometimes referred to as rods from God. This involves deploying massive tungsten rods from space, which could strike the Earth's surface with the force of a nuclear bomb without the radioactive fallout. If Musk's warship is indeed capable of deploying these kinds of weapons, it could theoretically wipe out a country like Russia by neutralizing key military installations and strategic targets in mere seconds. Strategic Implications The Global Response If SpaceX truly has developed a warship capable of wiping out a country like Russia in seconds, the geopolitical ramifications cannot be overstated. We are talking about a weapon that could disrupt the balance of power between nuclear-armed nations, shift military alliances, and force governments around the world to rethink their defense strategies. The most immediate question on everyone's mind is, why Russia? While there has been no official statement from Musk as to why Russia was singled out in the announcement, it's worth noting that relations between Russia and the West, particularly the United States, have been strained for decades. Russia has also made its own advances in military technology, 
including hypersonic missiles and space-based weaponry. It's possible that Musk's announcement was intended as a deterrent, a way to send a message to Russia and other adversaries that SpaceX and its technological capabilities should not be underestimated. However, Musk's warship also raises broader concerns about the future of warfare. We are entering an era where space is no longer just the final frontier for exploration, but the next battlefield. Nations around the world are investing heavily in space-based defense systems, satellite weaponry, and missile defense shields. If SpaceX's warship is as powerful as Musk claims, it could trigger a new arms race, with nations scrambling to develop their own space-based weapons to defend against potential attacks from above. Another potential consequence is the impact on global military alliances. For years, the United States has been the dominant military power, thanks in large part to its superior air force and navy. But if SpaceX's warship can truly dominate both space and Earth's atmosphere, it may change the dynamics of NATO, the European Union, and other global alliances. Countries may seek to form new partnerships or alliances to gain access to SpaceX's technology and ensure their own defense capabilities, legal and ethical concerns. As with any breakthrough military technology, there are also significant legal and ethical concerns surrounding Musk's warship. The militarization of space has been a topic of debate for decades with various international treaties, such as the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, designed to prevent the placement of weapons of mass destruction in space. However, these treaties were written long before the kinds of technological advancements that Musk and SpaceX have achieved, and there are growing concerns that current international law is ill-equipped to regulate the use of space-based military assets. If Musk's warship is capable of deploying devastating weapons from space, it raises questions about whether such a weapon violates existing treaties and international law. There may also be concerns about accountability. SpaceX, as a private company, operates under a different set of regulations than government entities, and it's unclear how much oversight Musk's warship would have from global regulatory bodies. Beyond legal concerns, there are also ethical questions about the development and use of such a powerful weapon. In a world where nuclear weapons already exist, adding space-based warships into the mix could lead to even more instability and potential conflict. While Musk may argue that the warship is a deterrent, the sheer power of such a weapon could lead to unintended consequences, including the risk of accidental launches or miscommunications that could escalate into full-blown war. The Future of SpaceX and Space Warfare As we look to the future, the release of SpaceX's warship will likely have lasting effects on the company, the military, and the world at large. For SpaceX, this could mark a new chapter in its evolution from a space exploration company to a major player in global defense. The technology developed for the warship could be applied to other areas such as satellite defense, space colonization, and even future space missions. Musk's vision for SpaceX has always included ambitious goals beyond Earth. With the warship's technology, the company could pave the way for more advanced space infrastructure, including space-based defense systems, resource mining, and even interstellar travel. The capabilities demonstrated by the warship could lead to further advancements in propulsion systems, energy weapons, and autonomous technologies. For the world, the implications are profound. The advent of space-based military technology could shift the global balance of power and lead to a new era of space warfare. Governments will need to adapt their strategies and invest in new technologies to defend against potential threats from above. International law may need to be updated to address the challenges posed by space-based weapons, and global organizations will play a crucial role in regulating and overseeing the use of such technology. As with all of Musk's ventures, the release of SpaceX's warship will undoubtedly spark debate, innovation, and change. Whether this new technology is ultimately a force for good or a harbinger of conflict remains to be seen. But one thing is clear. Musk's announcement has set the stage for a new chapter in the history of military technology, space exploration, and global geopolitics.
The Pentagon recently sent out three Navy destroyers and maritime patrol aircraft to keep an eye on a group of Russian ships that came within 30 miles of the Florida coast while conducting missile exercises. A defense official mentioned that now that they have been closely monitoring the Russian ships as they moved through the Atlantic Ocean within international waters. However, Russia was quite open about their deployed ships and their activities. Russian state-run media announced that a group of four ships, including a frigate and a nuclear-powered submarine, would visit Havana between June 12 and June 17. Previously, the Russian Ministry of Defense posted online that the ships conducted exercises involving high-precision missile weapons in the Atlantic Ocean and shared videos from aboard the vessels. The exercise included the crews of the frigate and submarine practicing with high-precision missile weapons using computer simulations. These simulations targeted naval groups of a mock enemy over 600 kilometers away. The statement noted that no actual missiles were launched. The Pentagon remained tight-lipped about which U.S. assets were deployed in response, but online amateur analysts used public flight and ship tracking data to identify the three destroyers as the USS Truxton, USS Donald Cook, and USS Delbert D. Black. They also noted the involvement of U.S. Navy P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol and anti-submarine aircraft. A defense official mentioned that the Navy's U.S. Second Fleet, U.S. Fourth Fleet, U.S. Coast Guard Atlantic Area, and Canadian Joint Task Force Atlantic were all performing routine operations throughout the Atlantic, emphasizing a strong position. Interestingly, a Defense Department photo of the truck student taken recently showed it sailing with the Canadian frigate HMCS Ville de Quebec and the U.S. Coast Guard Cutterstone. Online analysts also suspected these ships were part of the response to the Russian presence. The scene was like a high-stakes chess match on the ocean. The U.S. Navy destroyers moved with precision, their sleek forms cutting through the waves as they kept a vigilant watch. The P-8 Poseidon aircraft soared above, scanning the waters for any sign of unusual activity. The Russian ships, meanwhile, went about their exercises, the crews working diligently with their high-tech equipment. The tension was palpable, with both sides aware of the other's presence but maintaining a careful distance. In the background, the Canadian and U.S. Coast Guard ships added to the impressive show of force, their presence a reminder of the close cooperation between allies. The HMCS Ville de Quebec and Cutterstone moved in. Coordination with the U.S. destroyers, creating a formidable fleet that underscored the strength and readiness of the forces involved. In recent days, online analysts have noted that the Russian fleet came very close to the U.S. shore, within 25 miles. Reports from the Miami Herald mentioned that these ships were less than 30 miles off South Florida's coast. Images on platforms like Telegram, shared by Russian state-run outlets, showed these Russian ships, including a frigate and a submarine, docking in Havana. Pentagon spokeswoman Singh tried to downplay the situation, explaining to reporters that such port visits are routine. She emphasized that the U.S. regularly monitors any foreign vessels near its waters, but reassured that these exercises don't pose a threat to the United States. However, this visit is different because it involves some of Russia's newest and most advanced warships. The frigate, named Admiral Gorshkov, was introduced in 2018, while the submarine Kazan, which was launched in 2021, is equipped with advanced weaponry. The Kazan is on par with U.S. guided missile nuclear submarines, and she can carry a variety of missiles, including the hypersonic Zircon, anti-ship missile. According to a report by the UK-based think tank Royal United Services Institute, or USI, the Kazan is remarkably quiet matching the best Western nuclear submarines and has a long-range strike capability that surpasses many Western assets. In 2014, USNI News reported that a U.S. Navy official in charge of the submarine program was so impressed by this class of Russian submarine that he placed a model of its laid boat, the Severodvinsk, outside his office for daily observation. A defense official who spoke with Military.com noted that while Russian naval visits to Cuba are not uncommon, their frequency has increased due to U.S. support for Ukraine and NATO exercises. The official predicted that such activities are likely to become more common in the future. This recent event shows a notable shift as the Russian ships involved are among the most advanced in their fleet. Their presence so close to U.S. shores 
highlights the ongoing tensions in the strategic maneuvers by both nations. The advanced capabilities of the Admiral Gorshkov frigate and Kazan submarine underscore the evolving nature of naval power and the importance of monitoring these developments closely. While the Pentagon maintains that these visits are routine, the advanced nature of the vessels involved indicates a more complex picture. The Kazan's impressive stealth and striking power, along with the modern capabilities of Admiral Gorshkov, represent a significant aspect of Russia's naval modernization efforts. This modernization is likely a response to the increasing military support the U.S. provides to its allies and partners, particularly in regions of strategic interest like Eastern Europe. As these developments unfold, it is clear that both the U.S. and Russia are keenly aware of each other's movements and capabilities. This incident is a clear example of the broader geopolitical contest that continues to shape the interactions between major powers. The Cold War, a period of intense rivalry and tension between the United States and the Soviet Union, spanned from the end of World War II in 1945 until the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. This ideological conflict between the capitalist West, led by the United States, and the communist East, led by the Soviet Union, had profound global implications, influencing international relations, military strategies, and technological advancements. The recent movements of Russian naval forces near the U.S. coast in their docking in Havana evoke memories of Cold War dynamics, highlighting the enduring influence of that era on contemporary geopolitics. The war originated from the differing visions of post-World War II reconstruction and governance held by the United States and the Soviet Union. While the U.S. promoted democratic governance in free market economies, the Soviet Union sought to expand its model of centralized control and communist ideology. This fundamental clash of ideologies led to a global struggle for influence, manifesting in various forms such as propaganda, economic aid. Naval power played a critical role during the Cold War as control over the seas was essential for both projecting military power and securing trade routes. The U.S. Navy and the Soviet Navy were frequently engaged in a game of cat and mouse with submarines, destroyers, and aircraft carriers maneuvering to gain strategic advantages. The recent movement of Russian naval vessels near U.S. waters and their docking in Havana is reminiscent of Cold War tactics. During that period, both superpowers would regularly dispatch naval fleets to demonstrate power, gather intelligence, and reassure or intimidate allies and adversaries. The presence of advanced Russian warships such as the Admiral Gorshkov frigate and the Kazan submarine, near U.S. shores echoes the kind of strategic posturing that was commonplace during the Cold War. The Cuban Missile Crisis of October 1962 stands out as one of the most dramatic and perilous moments of the Cold War era. This high-stakes confrontation unfolded due to the alarming revelation of Soviet ballistic missiles stationed in Cuba, a mere 90 miles from the U.S. coastline. The discovery triggered immediate alarm in the United States, prompting swift and decisive action. The U.S. response included the imposition of a naval blockade around Cuba, accompanied by a firm demand for the removal of the offensive missiles. The gravity of the situation cannot be overstated as the world teetered on the edge of nuclear catastrophe. Tensions soared to unprecedented levels as both superpowers engaged in intense diplomatic negotiations while carefully measuring their military postures. Ultimately, the crisis was diffused through a combination of diplomatic dialogue and strategic concessions, averting a catastrophic escalation that could have had devastating consequences for the entire planet. The recent docking of Russian ships in Havana brings to mind this historic episode, highlighting the ongoing strategic significance of Cuba in U.S.-Russian relations. Although the recent presence of Russian warships does not pose an immediate threat, as emphasized by Pentagon, Spokeswoman Singh, it reminds us of the strategic maneuvers that characterize the Cold War and the potential for escalation. The Cold War era was also marked by an intense arms race, with both the United States and the Soviet Union investing heavily in the development of advanced military technologies. This included nuclear weapons, intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, and sophisticated naval vessels. The Russian submarine Kazan commissioned in 2021 and equipped with advanced hypersonic missiles 
represents the continuation of this legacy. The war saw the development of nuclear-powered submarines capable of staying submerged for extended periods and launching nuclear missiles from beneath the ocean's surface. The Kazan's capabilities, as noted by the Royal United Services Institute, reflect the ongoing evolution of submarine technology and its strategic importance. During the war, both superpowers sought to gain technological superiority in various domains, including space exploration, espionage, and cyber warfare. The space race highlighted by the Soviet Union's launch of Sputnik in 1957 and the U.S. moon landing in 1969 was a prominent aspect of this competition. Similarly, advancements in submarine technology and naval capabilities were crucial for maintaining strategic deterrence and ensuring mutual assured destruction. Espionage and intelligence gathering were critical components of the Cold War strategy. Both the U.S. and the Soviet Union maintained extensive networks of spies and conducted surveillance operations to gain insights into each other's capabilities and intentions. Naval operations often included intelligence gathering missions with submarines and reconnaissance aircraft playing key roles. The recent activities of Russian warships near the U.S. coast could have been seen as part of a broader intelligence gathering effort reminiscent of Cold War practices. During that era, Soviet submarines frequently operated near U.S. waters to monitor naval movements, gather electronic intelligence, and test the readiness of American defenses. The U.S. engaged in similar activities, deploying submarines and surface ships near Soviet territorial waters for reconnaissance missions. The war saw the formation of military alliances such as NATO and the Warsaw Pact, which solidified the division of Europe and other parts of the world into opposing blocs. These alliances were designed to provide collective security and deter aggression from the other side. In addition to direct military confrontations, the war was characterized by numerous proxy wars in which the U.S. and the Soviet Union supported opposing sides in regional conflicts. These included the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and conflicts in the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. Cuba, under the leadership of Fidel Castro, became a key Soviet ally in the Western Hemisphere, receiving military and economic support from the Soviet Union. The increased frequency of Russian naval visits to Cuba reflects the ongoing strategic importance of alliances and regional influence. Just as during the Cold War, contemporary geopolitical dynamics involve building and maintaining alliances to counterbalance rival powers. Russian spy ships, loaded with the latest electronic surveillance technology, often get alarmingly close to the American fleet. This is all part of Russia's plan to gather as much info as possible about what the Americans are up to. When these spy ships get too nosy, the American Navy doesn't panic. They've got a trick up their sleeves. About 5,000 sailors spring into action, turning off all their electronic gadgets and setting up fake signals to confuse the spies. But what's really fascinating is what goes on inside those American ships during these tense moments. It's a well-oiled machine of precision and quick thinking. Now let's dive deeper into why these Russian spy ships are so important to Russia. They're not out there for a fight. They're all about gathering secret info, keeping an eye on what other ships are doing around the world. They're like the eyes and ears of the Russian Navy, always listening and watching. Equipped with super advanced spy tools, these ships can listen in on all sorts of communications like radar signals and radio chatter. This helps Russia know what's happening in the sea, who's moving where, and what kind of cool gadgets other navies have. They're not just passive listeners. These spy ships can also mess with enemy electronics. They have sneaky tricks to disrupt radar and mess with communications, making it harder for their enemies to figure out what's going on. Russian spy ships use advanced technology like radar and sonar to quietly monitor where U.S. Navy ships are going. The U.S. Navy often comes across these Russian ships, which are allowed by international law to pass through certain areas near the U.S. On January 2023, a Russian spy ship was seen about 100 miles away from Hawaii. In 2019, another Russian spy ship was reported for being unsafe near the southeastern coast of the U.S. It's important to know about these spy ships because sometimes they come close to U.S. aircraft carriers in the open sea, which can be dangerous. Let's learn more about aircraft carriers first. They are like floating airports for the U.S. Navy, helping with many different tasks like security, 
disaster response, and combat missions. The U.S. has 11 huge nuclear-powered carriers, each carrying about 80 fighter jets. These carriers are the biggest in the world, with more space for planes than any other country's carriers combined. They are armed with powerful weapons and play a big role in keeping important waterways safe in dealing with international problems. When a Russian spy ship approaches too closely, the Combat Information Center CIC, also known as the Action Information Center AIC, springs into action like the brain of an aircraft carrier. This special area is fully equipped with instruments. Its main job is to gather, organize, and share information about combat situations. It's also responsible for carrying out specific tasks related to controlling combat as directed by the proper authority. You can think of it as the command hub where all crucial information is gathered and processed and decisions are made to ensure the safety and effectiveness of the ship or aircraft in combat. Information flows into the CIC from various sources like radar, sonar, visual lookouts, electronic, countermeasure equipment, radio, radio direction finders, intelligence reports, meteorological data, operation orders, and other publications. This diverse range of information must be organized and displayed in a way that its tactical significance is understood. This understanding is essential for issuing commands and taking appropriate actions. When a Russian spy ship is detected too close to the aircraft carrier, the CIC follows strict protocols to activate alarm systems. Audible and visual alerts are triggered throughout the carrier to alert the crew of a potential threat. This is vital to ensure that everyone on board is aware and prepared to respond. All crew members on the carrier are highly trained to handle any challenge. They are well-versed in the protocols and procedures to be followed during such situations. When the alarm sounds, the carrier goes into high alert mode. Crew members swiftly move to their designated positions, ready to fulfill their roles and responsibilities. The military places great emphasis on clear and concise communication protocols to ensure that information is conveyed accurately and swiftly. This ensures that the right actions are taken at the right time to safeguard the carrier and its crew. Standardized procedures and codes are usually set up. They help convey specific instructions and responses in a clear and organized way. For example, in a combat center, they use intercom systems, radios, or other communication devices to talk to the crew. This makes it easier for officers in the CIC to send important messages to everyone on the ship or just to certain parts of the ship. This ensures that everyone gets the important information they need. Let's say the crew has been told that there's an enemy spy ship nearby. When this happens, all the different units on the ship start following defense protocols right away. You see, spy ships are sneaky. They try to steal important information from the aircraft carrier. This could be stuff about how the carrier works, plans for missions, or even personal details about the crew. So the first thing they do is try to stop the enemy from getting any information. For example, sailors might get a message telling them to turn off all their electronic devices. This is a proactive step to make sure there's no chance of the enemy picking up any signals or getting unauthorized info. Turning off these devices also helps keep things under control on the ship. It's important to keep everything secure and make sure the crew can focus on what they need to do. You see, U.S. Navy aircraft. Carriers have lots of high-tech systems to protect themselves. These systems can mess with the spy ship's surveillance and make it hard for them to do anything tricky. These systems don't just stop the spy ship from spying. They can also mess with their communications and radar, making it tough for them to figure out what's going on or to do anything harmful. Electronic jamming is a vital defense strategy used to confuse enemy spy ships. It works by sending out signals that mess up the radar signals these ships use to watch and follow targets. Similarly, big ships like aircraft carriers have advanced gadgets for communication jamming. These gadgets can mess with or even block the radio signals and communication waves used by spy ships. The goal is to mess up the enemy's ability to talk and plan effectively. Aircraft carriers can also use tricky tactics like deploying fake signals or decoys. These decoys copy the electronic signals of real ships, causing confusion 
and making it harder for spy ships to figure out what's real and what's not. This diversion tactic helps protect the carriers from being easily detected. Another smart move is using signal intelligence, also known as Signet. This tactic involves collecting all sorts of signals and communication info from the enemy. It could be anything from spoken words to written messages or data from radar and weapons. This info is like a window into what the spy ships are up to, how they operate, what they're planning, and if they pose any danger. By studying the patterns of these signals over time, carriers can guess what the spy ships might be thinking or planning. This insight helps in deciding the best ways to mess with their communications and, if needed, how to respond if things get serious. The carrier's intelligence team does more than just follow the spy ship. They carefully study what the spy ship is up to. This means looking at the spy ship's behaviors and movements closely. They try to figure out if the spy ship is being aggressive or not and how close it is to the carrier group. By doing this, they can understand if the spy ship poses any danger and what it might be trying to do. With this information, the naval commanders can then decide how they should respond. It's important to note that the carrier's leadership also looks at all the information they have gathered about the spy ship to figure out how risky the situation is. They look at things like how the spy ship has acted in the past, what the current situation is like, and how much of a threat they think the spy ship is. This helps them decide on the best way to react, whether it's through talking things out or getting ready to defend themselves, depending on how dangerous they think the spy ship is. Even though spy ships can be very fast and high tech, they can't surprise a US aircraft carrier. The carrier's advanced surveillance systems are so good that they can detect these spy ships from miles away. To make sure they don't miss anything, US Navy, Aircraft carriers use advanced radar techniques and technologies. These radar systems are designed to do different jobs, like searching for ships on the water. One type of radar, called surface search radar, is especially useful for this. It helps the carriers spot any ships nearby, as well as things like rocks or other obstacles in the water. The U.S. Navy's aircraft carriers go beyond using just powerful radars for detection. They utilize various technologies, such as visual lookouts, electronic, countermeasures, radio direction finders, and intelligence reports. This combination of tools ensures that potential threats, including spy ships, are not only spotted but also prevented from remaining undetected. Let's delve into the importance of detecting spy ships promptly and the potential consequences of delays. Detecting spy ships is crucial for maintaining maritime security. These vessels are not traditional warships. Their main goal is gathering intelligence rather than engaging in direct combat. However, if they are detected near U.S. aircraft carriers and deemed a threat to the country's sovereignty, action must be taken. Delayed detection of spy ships can lead to several significant consequences. Firstly, it provides these ships with more time to gather sensitive information, potentially compromising national security. Secondly, a delayed response increases the risk of these vessels carrying out hostile actions or coordinating attacks with other hostile entities. This not only endangers the safety of the carrier, but also poses a broader threat to regional stability. The rules of engagement, RO, plays a vital role in guiding the response to such situations. RO are rules and directives that outline the circumstances, conditions, degree, and manner in which force or actions that could be seen as provocative can be used. For U.S. Navy vessels encountering enemy ships, ROE prioritizes de-escalation, but also provides a framework for escalating responses when necessary. When facing close encounters with potentially hostile ships, U.S. Navy sailors must adhere to strict ROE. These guidelines ensure that actions taken are proportionate to the threat posed. The decision to use lethal force is based on the imminent danger presented by the approaching enemy vessel. This emphasizes the importance of accurate and timely detection to assess threats effectively and respond accordingly within the bounds of international law and military protocols. As we delve into the potential encounter between a Russian spy ship and a U.S. aircraft carrier, it becomes evident how complex and challenging such situations can be. The importance of being well prepared cannot be overstated when discussing the readiness of the U.S. Navy to handle threats from its adversaries. The U.S. Navy is equipped with state-of-the-art technology, advanced surveillance systems, and cutting-edge offensive and defensive mechanisms on its warships. 
This arsenal enables the Navy to swiftly detect, assess, and neutralize threats within a remarkably short time frame. The Navy's capability to respond and adapt to evolving situations is a testament to its strength and preparedness. The dedication and courage of the sailors in the U.S. Navy play a crucial role in maintaining the country's dominance in the vast oceans.